I'm this like, I'm... like a slave account or something. I don't know. It's all yeah. confusing. Um, communications. Uh, uh, other than like onboarding stuff, we had a pretty much longer conversation than we planned to, with regard to onboarding. Like the inter internal comms, I'm starting to like use levels of intern in the internal comms and external comms because it's the only way I can think of it now. Yeah. Uh, so with internal comms, we've decided to the needs requests coordination channel is the way we're going to primar primarily onboard and work out people. Work work out team needs, and we're going to use the so we're, we're going to prioritize pulling from who's recently been talking in um, Slack in, rather than searching and hunting for other people elsewhere. We are willing to start doing that, but it's a case of um, if someone needs to come with specific needs. Uh, so we've decided You're to get a, cut off frequently. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, we, um, we decided to give it a week to see how that goes. That's a lot of time. Week. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of time for us, but we we we'd, we figured we'd re meet. Would it's be, it's working, so it's not yeah. like we need to. But we'd figure we'd give it a week and make sure it's still working. If there's any other ways to work it, because uh, Yada um, suggested Yada and Anson suggested maybe a Google Form system and a record system going back to a spreadsheet, and as it could work, it has it. They both have advantages and disadvantages. And we're trying to work out if the disadvantages of the Slack channel are enough to worry about. So we're going to basically, when a new request comes in, we're going to pin it. And if someone's searching, we're going to give it a, a spyglass or a, you know, a magnifying glass symbol, basically mm. as a symbol of that person is looking for that, for, to fill that request. So it's a case of we know someone's actively doing it. Or you can use um, the comments. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we can comment in as well. We'll say we can look, we are looking, you know. This is how I established it with the annotations was Anson. So we have this private channel of YouTube uh, annotations, which pings us every time video is uploaded. And then basically we comment, got this. And whoever is, is taking the call, uh, taking the, the part, just got this one and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, we just did it as a visual way, so because otherwise it can end up with a thread saying four or five things, and it could yeah. actually be it could be a discussion point and not actually got it. If nothing else, we know the symbol. You can hover over it and go, oh, actually, yeah, it's looking at or tied. It's just a way of just anyone who can see it who's in there can go. Um, you know, you can you can just have the and then the tick mark. We've decided that the tick mark is the fulfilled or found or suggested. You know. It's, we're going to try and keep up with teams and if something doesn't fit or if, you know, someone's turned up and you know, typed and said a good game, but for whatever reason um, is not living up to it because, you know, not everyone works in every team dynamic. So it's a case Can of you let Shannon in? Too much power, I'm not used to this. I'm not even paying attention to that side of the screen. Yeah. Oh, hey, we have a lot of people. We got Chris. Hey, hey. Shannon's back. Shannon's in. Hey, hey Anton, Anton and Anton, just to make it extra confusing. <laughs> so, do we have two Antons here? Ah, oh, okay, Anton Zoller is here. Yeah, I'm glad. I, 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 I blame you, hand. We've got two artists today, so it's fine. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Is one of you DevOps, Anton? Uh, kind of, yeah. Okay, I think you and Dan Sosa and I have a, a meeting to set up. Oh, uh, really? Um, it might be you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, like, I I don't I'm not aware of any meeting setups, so maybe we, I don't know how many Antons do we have to begin with. Um, well, he so just to, to uh, give you background, he he and I are talking about doing some testing framework for the uh -huh. VT team code, and he said that yeah. there was Anton who was working on DevOps, and maybe we should rope him in. And I think he. Oh, has... okay. So regarding that, then I'm probably the right Anton. I'm just don't. I'm not aware of any meetings yet. So. Uh, no, no, we're still we're still working out when now. to meet. <laughs> no, the, yeah. it's the ah, coordination okay. of the meeting, not the actual. Is there it. is a meeting there? It's the we need to make sure we have one. Exactly. Uh, okay. uh, Shannon, Shannon was in the call earlier on with regard to onboarding. 
so she's kind of aware of the system and the process we're going to be having whether she does onboarding regularly or not is is her choice it's just i figured she she seemed to be starting to get involved or at least superficially involved so i um i just wanted to keep people as many people up to date as possible uh, so yeah so we're going to be doing needs request we're using emo um, emojis to symbolize when someone's picked it up and when it's fulfilled and when it is fulfilled, we're going to unpin it as well. So we'll always have kind of a, the pinned list will be the current still currently looking for or not fully, fully fulfilled. And then if we can't find anyone within, you know, a, a small enough window or if it's high enough um, needs, then we will start looking through the emails and the application processes and start wondering, you know, see if we can look a little bit further afield rather than the people who are in Slack and looking. But I've kind of thought that the people in Slack looking should be the ones we should prioritize because they are making the active effort to reach out. So they're already more available than someone who just filled a form in and then turns out they don't have time or they've not driven themselves further to find out or to go looking. So that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. Yeah, right and now. we don't have that many people that are coming with incoming requests for us. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, on the external comm stuff, Daniel's kind of doing that side of things right now, so I don't know where he's at. Um, and there is Anton that is trying to help us bridge the gap in communication with AI2 or any yeah. other organizations. There is a second one called DAX Technologies or something that is potentially a, a big NLP resource for us from what I understand. And yeah, ideally Anton has a quick call or something with them uh, this week. I had a really interesting short discussion with someone earlier on. I mentioned him earlier and he put, he posted up a few different groups that he's connected with and he's help, helping volunteering with as well. And it might be a case of, we might be able to reach out. Some of, some of them might be small organ, you know, small groups doing small things or yeah, I was talking about the fact that they might be um, duplicating processes or duplicating methods. And if we could, share what we we've learned and maybe they could share what they're learning and we could all all get somewhere quicker and if for example if any of them groups needed um a space to have communications or you know if just we're, we're happy to have like bridges with other groups or that sort of stuff so it was something i suggested but i've not formalized that and i need to speak to daniel because again i'm trying to not do too much external mm -hmm. stuff because i'll just i'm already spreading myself yeah, I think I it's better for you to focus on internal, for sure. For now, at least. Um, I don't really have anything else to say, really, other than I'm going to try and make a visual log chart. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with that, how it's going to look, but I'll, I'll come up with something. Yeah. So, um, uh, Tyler, do you have um, a tool in mind for creating the visual org chart? I was, well, there's the, there's the um, Lucid Charts, which I've signed up to because of Arta, but at the same time, I might just use Figma. Figma's nice. I use okay. Arta work because Figma yeah, we is just... Yeah, we have paid a uh, Lucid Chart account, so... Okay, um, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I mean, Lucid Chart's good for a flowchart diagram, but this isn't it's really good a flowchart. It's good to make chart. sure that uh, the thing that you create, and then whenever you don't have time to update it, there is someone that will jump in and update it. It's Figma's so free though. Efficient. Yeah, it works for that way. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to look at it, but I've never used it. Whereas at least Figma's like a free collaboration software for design. It's literally. Yeah, I mean, let, let's try it. But I've never used Figma. So are, are either UX. of these able to link data from a database such as like our Excel spreadsheet? I'm not. That's too, a I'm great sorry, question. I don't think we're at that stage uh, to be able to generate things on the fly. It would be amazing, but I think. Like we're just not ready to generate uh, the you know org chart from the spreadsheet. Um, yeah. I, I can't claim that I have figured out exactly the implementation, which is why I'm asking Tyler, since he's probably more experienced with that kind of thing than I am. Um, but I was thinking, Tyler, if you know of a tool where you can you can adjust the fields yourself, meaning like the arrangement of how all the boxes flow. Um, but you're able to say this box should point to this cell, then if I change the, the point person's name that goes with that box, then you never have to worry about that again. Is That's what's coming through my head, at least. I don't know anything that does it automatically, but um, okay. 
I don't, don't know anything that's got a code base behind it without it being an actual, like a website, <laughs> you know? Yeah, because, I know it's something that but, like actually auto updates. Yeah. Um, but at the same at the same time though, um, uh, there's I mean Justin for example makes like little web web development and web apps and stuff. So it could be something that, as we stabilize with a structure, we could get someone to whip up a simple web, like local website just for org stuff because we we were thinking that a way of um helping communications would be um almost like a an online who's online in the right teams to speak to and if we could work out where people are you know where people are team wise that way if you if someone's looking for someone they could rather than having to hunt through all different channels and stuff you could just go to a page and go and write who's who's yeah, we actually have plenty of like ideas how to build this meta layer on top of Slack. It's just a matter of priorities at this stage. Yeah, and things like bots. We were thinking, I was thinking that maybe a bot could read who's live, and then from mm -hmm. that, we could cross section the bots reading of who's live, and then assign that to, like you say, a visual way of like, well, the the main person from data is not in, but you know, a, another highly experienced person who, who we consider sort of second in, second in command is on, go speak to them. It might be just a way of visually, again, vi almost like having a live visual. We, we sort of talked about earlier, like a live visual uh, what's going on. I don't know. It's, it's uh, not right now, but it's something yeah. that would be nice. Um, I don't really know what else to say. Okay. Anyone, so got, I, anyone got any? Yeah, I got a couple of things. So... Uh, there is a big part of communications, which is external communications that will happen with uh, two pieces. First one is the actual Kaggle notebook and communicating what we've produced so far. I hope to get to that tomorrow with uh, three of the teams. And I hope to help them frame that with uh, someone's help. I think Anson will be able to help me. And the other part, like let's assume that we build some amazing Kaggle notebook. It's still not the right way to deliver it to, let's say, a journalist or medical uh, expert or epidemiologist or any other person that looks at it. Like obviously pieces of code and all of that stuff is completely irrelevant. So that was the idea behind this uh, webinar, post-submission webinar that could happen like three days after the submission or, or so. And we just need someone to help structure that agenda for the webinar and pull different pieces into it, structure the ideal flow of things, how we describe each of the tasks, how each of the leaders are integrated into it. So a lot of like actual external communication stuff. So, so that's in, definitely... Archer, in your, in your mind, what would be the highlights of that agenda? Who, who's the audience? I'm sorry I missed the, the, the run up to this. So the audience is people that have no clue what Kaggle is and have no interest in exploring Kaggle notebooks, but still are very interested in what's happening here. Uh, primarily to give you a couple of examples, either journalist that wants to write about stuff that we're doing or a person that actually has um, potential to use what we produce. So medical uh, person, uh, people like Randall, the MDs, or uh, epidemiologists, and all kinds of people that will, we are basically creating this for. And even though there will be a channel of communication that Kaggle will streamline in terms of, I, I've talked to CEO of Kaggle and he's working with the WHO, World Health Organization and other policymakers to make sure that you know our results are visible to them and explained. But again, that's like Kaggle is not the best channel to explain that. And having a webinar that walks uh, through you know all of the kind of like high level details, what the vaccines and uh, therapeutics team was working on, what risk factors were wor working on, potentially also integrating some of the medical experts that help them. I know there are MDs that helped Maya with the risk factors and we can include their reasoning, like what exactly they've produced within the scope of work and why they think it's valuable output. Does it make sense? Okay, uh, absolutely. Um, so 
my follow-up question, since you mentioned that we our submission prototype is by Kaggle rules, I think, is the, the are these Jupyter notebooks. Um, I wasn't previously familiar with Jupyter notebooks, but I've been getting familiar with them. Um, from a software standpoint, they're um, they they're problematic for 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 various purposes. So I'm wondering, um, are there opinions floating around about what the ideal delivery system would be for these people you mentioned, these researchers and doctors? And Webinar. So forth? Oh no, I meant in terms of how they're going to use it, not them learning about it. Okay, and that, so I think once they learn what is out there, once there's a click, you know, uh, there are two potential ways. The first one, they see it and they're like, oh, wow, I can definitely use it. The, that's the good one. Uh, but there is a second one, which is a bad one, which is also useful, as useful, useful. When they see something and they're like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. I should reach out to them and tell them like it doesn't make any sense. So those two things will probably go to Kaggle Notebook unless we create separate pages for these kind of findings for, for people to explore. And that's also a point to discuss. Okay. So maybe add some clarification. Right now, after our first submission, we don't have any software product to push you know, to the audience outside of Kaggle. With the exception of the vaccines team. They actually mm -hmm. have a visual like UI to filter the drugs and explore the, uh, the results. That's the only team that has UI UX in traditional way. Yeah, but it's still like the way it's implemented, it's not exactly a product, yes. it's kind of a demo. So mm -hmm. the only thing we have is a demo of what we could build, you know, much better and then push it to the audience outside. But right now the idea is we have a demo, please give us feedback. Do you like it? Or is it complete, like we're doing something wrong and you know, you need to tell us about it. That's, that's the goal. Yeah, and if we can't package it into under an hour webinar, then we did something wrong. So that's, that should be yeah, it's, it's not been communicated clearly if we can't get it inside an hour. This, this is actually a very challenging task and may require multiple people working on this, maybe creating a shared Google Doc that is kind of agenda for that webinar is a good starting point. So we can just brain dump into it. Um, should not the team leads each have like a chunk of this to present the highlights of their product? I mean, I know especially Maya has, you know, entrepreneurial experience I bet this is the kind of thing she does a lot. And I bet anybody who's, anybody who's leading the team knows the important details mm -hmm. of what this product is and isn't so far. Except we have to provide a structure that says, hey, Maya, this is exactly where you fill in you know, your stuff. Right. Because if you ask Maya, hey, we need to create a webinar. Can you create some structure? Will be you know, very, very hard. Just create small work. If we can give a framework and go, you've got, 10 minutes to explain your piece and you've got 10 minutes to explain your piece and you've got, and we've got a 10 minutes at the beginning to talk about the whole project project. And then a 10 minutes at the end for a summary of how it all works and how people can get involved in maybe improving, editing, changing, reach out to us to say what's good, what's, what's bad, what's useful, what's not useful, help us refine this whole process. Yeah, exactly. I would say also a quick usage overview, what goes in, what comes out, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we all have ideas. Let's create that uh, doc um, as soon as possible. And let's just brain dump into it. something we'll for formalize. Kind of amazing how that happens where you throw enough people at a problem and <laughs> enough people who just brain dump into it. And then someone who looks at it goes, well, that's good and that's crap and that's good and we'll keep that bit and we'll edit that bit away and yeah, it's, and then somebody else comes and looks at it again and goes, oh, well, I like that and I don't like this and yeah, we all just between us crowdsource the something knowledgeable part, at the end of it. <laughs> the best part is when you come in when already all of this process happened and you're like, holy shit, like this looks amazing. How did it happen? <laughs> yeah. I think, I think it'd be really interesting to just like have someone recording that over a half an hour period of just like 
people hacking stuff together <laughs> just to watch watch how eight people doing one thing turns out the beauty crazy of thing it again. is it's all documented like it's all slack it's all youtube it's all trello we can almost rerun simulation of everything that happened in the in a geeky way i mean it's so weird to think that every dumb comment i've made in the last three weeks is on youtube <laughs> Yeah, I've I've swore more times than I should have done in these videos, but you know, such is life sometimes. Yeah, uh, I'm not offended by the idea of swearing, but I've definitely I've started to go. You know what? Maybe I should be a bit more mindful of the audience. I know it's adults, but still, I need to be a bit more professional or something. Well, like we that. have eleven <laughs> graders joining us. Like I know, really? I, I, yeah, there was a um, a, a young lad a who's. Honestly, he's got a LinkedIn already, and the, the, <laughs> oh the, 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 the guy, the guy is, is probably like way above where I ever, like where I ever am now. He's like working for Mount Sinai under some head of AI or something, and I'm like, you're like 15. What is going on? <laughs> That's awesome. But I'm like, I've, 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 I give him a pat on back for the fact that yeah, 15 year old turned up and went, what can I help you with? And I'm like. I don't know. You're 15. And then I looked at his LinkedIn and went, probably everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like you, need to, you need to bring your supervisor in who's head of Mount Sinai's AI because he would be really useful. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's a good idea. Connections are good too. I know. I'm, I'm starting to realize that sometimes it might not be the first person who reaches out, but the person they know could be an amazing asset and we need to start making them people go, oh yeah, but do you know anybody else who's like you know, a professor of AI, <laughs> please, who's also a medical doctor. One of them, well, look, can we have like, them? <laughs> we have a case study of that here. Uh, um, Chris joined us because uh, Michael Smart Caven just lured him in. And you know, that that's exactly how it happens. Yeah, yeah I, heard your, uh, I heard your little demo earlier on, Chris. Not bad, man. Not, as an audio yeah, guy, you, fellow I, audio I guy. I throw something up, you know. Try something. Yeah, it's a, yeah, as a fellow audio guy, I was like, it's not bad. This is pretty good recording. Not bad at all. I mean, I, 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 I just have this. I used to have a better mic for recording, like, you know, because I sing and play guitar and stuff, but I, I lost that in a breakup. So, you know, I got, I got this one now. Oh, I got to hit I've, you up to find out what that is since I do music also, but I don't know how to do recording very well. <laughs> I've, I've got my cheap mic on, um, but I've got my expensive mic packed away when I don't use, unless I can. Condenser. Do the condenser yeah, so the, the both can be condensers this is just a penciled condenser compared to a, a full full a full rigged up right. one anyway let's let's not get too good i mean if you want to talk music we can definitely talk this another time i run an able to produce a group man it's like yeah, oh shoot talk. really yeah yeah i run i run a, one of the biggest ones on, on one of the biggest ones on facebook 20 22,000 members now oh man i have yeah. a friend who's really into that but this I'll, offline i'll talk to you some more about it <laughs> yeah, yeah i love a bit of ableton but i've been a bit lazy with it recently i've picked up some really cool instruments recently too though because there's loads of deals and loads of free stuff everyone's giving away i'm like yep free things i'll take all the free things mm, you're that's giving a nice away guitar man Definitely. There's just loads of free software existing right now and samples because everyone's like, yeah, stay home, stay safe, make music. I'm like, I will take all of your free things. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, man. Uh, is anything else need to say anything? I think oh, we're Ogle. good. Let's start. Ogly kind of missed our call earlier on, so I'm wondering if she's got anything to say. Ogly? Uh, no, 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 no. Um, you, you, you explained it um, quite well. No, no questions. Um, I'm good. I'm good. Um, yeah, thanks. And any questions going on in general? Because I've not caught a call with you recently, so I'd happily hear anything you've got to say. Um, no, none that I can think of. Honestly, I've been like tediously working on this um, spreadsheet with the uh, country population. So I've just kind of been lost, lost in that. Um, but I'm done with that. And I'm gonna like go back um, and just like see what I've missed on Slack the past couple hours. Um, but okay. yeah, nothing, nothing, no questions, um, no questions. I think I definitely need more to do because I think now that we've established like what really needs to be done in terms of onboarding, there's not as much yeah, work. The, the, um, some, of the, some of the work was the framework and now we've started to get a framework, we can all just use it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which is great. Uh, which is good because yeah, it means we the people who have been like kind of tied up trying to yeah, we've we've got something done and we can start concentrating on other com stuff. I'm sure there's if you've got 
if you're a, a writing kind of person or you're good with expressing words, we've definitely got plenty of little tasks that involve a good written communicator. Or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, well, it's late here, so I'm going to like... It's, yeah, roll, I'm going to bed soon. We'll, we'll talk him on. Um, but yeah, tomorrow, I I'll, like, I'll look through. I haven't been on Trello um, in a bit, so I'll look through there and see, or I'll just um, get in touch with you and see. Um, what cool. you yeah, um, I wouldn't mind as uh, someone to have a second pass on core values. Yeah, just I got it. Cause, I'll edit whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm great at that. No, yeah, exactly. We've got, um, there is a concept. I've put a concept up. I'd like to see ideally one from everyone in the communications team, at least, because that's like a good sort of 10, 12 people. And I'd like to think everyone in communications uh, by definition thinks they're good at communicating. So <laughs> they're, they're more likely to express things and sim uh, simplify the words. And I'm, I'm not saying mine's a good version. I definitely feel like there's been plenty of room for improvement and editing and, and um, artists put some ideas up and some ways of refining the differences between the two sides of how values are described, like one of them being what, what drives us and makes us function and one of them being like the things that is a basic... How to deal should, with, sh with yeah, reality. What, what, what we should have and how, yeah, how we should, the, 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 the lens that we look through the world with and the other one is like the ideals we aim towards. That's the yeah. best way I described it. Do um, you okay. have like a, um, is there like a, a working document on this? There's a, there's, a Trello, there's a Trello task. I just literally put a checklist up. It's as easy as that. Make your okay. own checklist, make your own checklist, screenshot it, attach it. That's the, I feel like that's a way of making a concrete, you, this is my version. And then we'll okay. just stitch together ideas from everyone's versions or I don't know, we'll have a vote on it or I don't, I don't care really. But I'd like to see a few versions of it because I know, know a lot of people, it's, I mean, I, the first, first person to go, someone else is probably better at this. I'll just leave them to it. But, um, but uh, the fact of it is we all probably feel like that. So the more of us just do it, between us, the crowd will again come up with something that, oh, actually, I'm, just like we said earlier, I like what Ogley said in that one. That's a really good way of saying, you no, know, succinctly way of saying that particular value. Oh, yeah, Shannon actually came up with a really good way of succinctly saying that value. And actually, I agree with that one even more than the way I put it. And yeah, it's just, you know, Arthur might go, actually, I like that way more than the way I said it. And that's, and then we'll hopefully stitch together something that's not just one person saying it and everyone going, yeah, that's good enough. I don't want that because that feels the opposite of what how we work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's Whoa. actually like very true. For example, today I kept using this, we're demand driven. And then Anton was, we're actually necessity driven. And I was yeah. like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. You know, that's true. That's so true, actually. But yeah, yeah so I like this. I like this crowdsourcing idea because I would never trust myself to come up with that on my own. So, and, and I'm, so, and I'm the first person to criticize my own work. So like the fact of it is if I put something open, somebody goes, it looks good. I'm like, well, it's more for you if you think that's good. Somebody else probably does so, a better job, but we'll wait for that. One of the things with this like crowdsourcing of ideas, we need to keep an eye on like big portion of our community are like introverts and shy, right? And even for example, like I'm personally not shy anymore, but I'm still introvert. So, like, I, for example, have specific set of ideas that definitely resonate with, with myself, with a lot of other technical folks. But, for example, for me, it's really hard to even come up with this checklist. So we still have a bias, even with this process, there'll be biased towards, like, you know, that type of people. And, for example, like, one of the things that I care a lot, especially within CoronaWide, because, right, what our teams are doing, they take a data set on one place, enrich it and put it in the other, right? And some of the teams are really care about like, okay, we validate the data set, we do this, we do that, right? But some people like, they still care that the data set is the good one, clean data set, et cetera, but they don't actually kind of voice in it, right? Even though they feel it inside. so there is a set of like this ethics in, in data science set of ideas that I, I don't know how, like what is the good way 
to to introduce to our process of this crowdsourcing through like Trello board, etc. I have a specific uh, like video done by Jeremy, the founder of Fast AI Library and Community. Uh, he is very like a vocal about all of these ideas. So it would be really great if somebody like with communication skills, etc., would like look through that video and maybe come up with the set of ideas from there and just add to this mix that we're describing here with, with our process. Do you think it's uh, like a... Uh, link it open, link it open comms, this? link it open communications will... will yeah, and that's a, the bias towards people that have experience extracting these things because it actually is a skill to be able to extract that from your ideals and also extract it from something that you hear that resonates but are not able to um, communicate because like you may hear something and the first time I heard you know Ray Dalio's principles like eight years ago I was like oh wow this is exactly how my brain works this is how I want to to say things but I wasn't ready I wasn't able to actually produce any principles of my own until now I feel and that's the same thing for many many people you know it takes a long time to percolate over things yeah. yep well and then in addition to that right so you have somebody else's ideas that resonate with yours then you have your ideas right but then what we need to come up with ideals and ideas core values that resonates with the community right so it's i think it's even next level step in terms of how complex of a task it is well it is one of the reasons why i said i don't want me to write it or Daniel to write it or any one person to write it and then everyone else go, ah, oh, that'll do. It's good enough. Or it's kind of, kind of all right. Or it's sort of, I sort of get what they're saying. You know, I don't want that. I want to people to go, I, it's, have you ever done like, um, like uh, icebreakers? There's a really good icebreaking me method that I've learned before and it's a really common one, but it's especially good for, um, for children and teens and people who need like structure. What you do, is you do an icebreaker where they make the rules and the fact that they make the rules makes them stick to the rules because they feel part of the process of the making of the rules. And the way that a core value is, is if everyone feels part of defining our core values, they've already internalized the core values because they've thought about it and reflected on it and they've decided that this is, yeah, I agree with that core value and that core value, and I don't agree with that one. So if we get enough of that, yes, we're not going to get a perfect set, but we're going to get something that enough people go, yeah, that is definitely part of who I am. And this is definitely also what I see the organization as. And the fact that more people get that will make people more emotionally invested and not just intellectually invested and being emotionally invested makes people natural um advocates that natural expresses and once they've internalized interesting good clear ways of expressing that information when someone asks them online or face to face in a meeting in six months time or a year's time and say well what were you doing with it and or, what was the thing and they almost they've got all of this like data bank of ways of expressing things and they've accumulated them and they don't have to sit and really struggle to how to express it because they've picked picked all the different ways of expressing and fully communicating it and they don't have to like work it out on the spot because like you say some people don't have that natural communication and thinking fast and expressing quickly and easily and if you can make summaries and make people's life easier when they are talking in webinar all these sort of things then in long term it just becomes more communicable so I see. all right guys Sorry. i have to jump into another call um but i think yeah exactly like i think this the last 10 minutes of our conversation is very important and we should facilitate that so yeah let's wrap it up wrap it up uh thank you very much for coming out guys thanks for spending your time uh i'll see you guys tomorrow because i'm going to bed shortly and i'll see if i can put something resembling an old chart together because literally, I, the, old, the old chat I wrote out, I was listening to you with the podcast talk last night, and I was like, well, yeah, that's kind of, I was agreeing along with it, and I was like, oh, well, there's that team, and then this down, and that team, and I was pausing it, and I was thinking about something. And then I just dumped it into a net message, and I'm like, yeah, that's probably about right. That'll do for now. <laughs> <laughs> and it was great. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, man. Uh...
Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thanks, guys.